Luke 14, what we just said, paints a p- perfect picture of what it is, is about this willingness to sacrifice and put everything on the table, relationally, physically, your possessions, everything is on the table. Now, does God allow us to steward and manage relationships? Of course, but everything is on the table and we have to be willing to disperse of it or give it up at any moment. I just don't believe that we were saved to stumble our way through life this side of heaven. I believe that we should respond to his saving grace with life that glorifies him in every way, both the spiritual and the practical. Family, welcome to another episode a safe talk. What's going on, y'all? How's everything? Host Gio. Got it right? Yes, you did. Co-host Guy. How you been, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. It's late. I'm a little tired, but I'm good. I feel good. Yeah, because we usually do mornings. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. The night is, is a late night. Man, um, with this topic, bro, I'm very amped up about it. Yeah. Because I feel like, one, it doesn't get talked about enough. And I think, too, at least for me, there is a profound sadness and frustration when I talk to new believers and I ask them, you know, how did they come to Christianity? What was the basis? You know, just the yeah, stuff about yeah. their their um their conversion. And then when I hear, yeah, you know, I was talking to this leader, I was hearing the gospel, and what got me into Christianity was the promises of Jesus, right? But is a promise that when you come to Christianity, that God is going to resolve both physically, mentally, emotionally, every challenge that you have. And we know in, in, in eternity, and eventually in eternity, that's true. But on this side of eternity, if you're homeless, God may keep you homeless even after your, your conversion. Yeah, you may remain homeless, yeah. If you don't have a car, you may still not have a car after your conversion. But I think, and once again, to my leaders, my pastors, my influencers, gospel people, I love y'all, but I think we need to do a better job in explaining the gospel in a way that brings about change instead of dressing it up, making it attractive, well, for people to come to Christianity. I would, I, well, I would say that a lot of people or a lot of leaders that are preaching that aren't preaching the gospel. It's kind of fake gospel. Yeah, they're not, they're not really preaching the gospel because what, 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 what you're preaching is this... Gimmick. Yeah. Genie where, in a bottle. Where, exactly. Christianity. Where it's like there's an exchange. I follow God and God does for me what I want him to do. Yeah. I.e. I'm struggling financially. I.e. I don't have a house or I.e. I don't have a husband or I.e. You know, I'm going through this situation in my life. So God, I need you. Da, da, da. So I, I pursue him with the expectation that he's going to resolve, that he's going to resolve these issues. And the, the, the ultimate re- reasoning or response to my pursuit is not the fact that he, he, he saved me. And my soul has been rescued. It's more so these superficial things over here that I need him to do. That he can provide. And, and, the, and the thing why it's frustrating for me, because as a true believer, like we are in a business of bringing other believers to know the true Jesus, right? The, the, the true Jesus. And this is what Jesus has done for you. And this is the beautiful thing about being part of his family. But what happens is when... When our leaders give this false expectation to these people, they lift them disgruntled, like hating Christians, hating Jesus, church hurt, all time high because of that, because you promised me something and that's what attracted me. So it wasn't the power of the gospel that attracted me. 
it was what you told me that Jesus could do for me as far right. as removing certain things that I'm struggling with or I'm going through. That's what attracted me. It wasn't the power of the gospel. Right. So now when, when those things are not happening, how do you expect me to respond to that? Right, right. You get what I'm saying? So so that's why it's very frustrating for me when I hear that because, because like I said, as believers, like we want people to know the power of the gospel, the power that could change you going from death to life, going from a sinner to a son. You know what I'm saying? And 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 leaders, we just gotta do better. Yeah, it's a real thing, bro. Like when, <laughs> we just gotta do better. When I when I think about when I think about my my personal ex experience of walking away or attempting to walk away from the faith, my whole thing was, God, I quote unquote committed my life to you from the time that I was a child, and now I've lost my marriage. Right, I've lost my business. I'm losing 50% custody, you know, of my daughter. daughter. All these things kind of like falling to the wayside. And it's like, wait, God, I did all these things for you. Shouldn't I get something in return? See, the epitome of my faith and love and relationship with God was based on a God that does for me in exchange for the things I do for him. It wasn't the gospel. It just wasn't the gospel. Yeah. So, so. It goes beyond just saying, hey, we need to do a better job preaching the gospel or or bringing people in with the gospel. We need to bring people in with the gospel truth. Yeah. Instead of just, you know what I'm saying? Like, instead of bringing people in with, 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 with you know, like, like you said, like we're preaching this genie type ideology. Um, and that's just not the case. Now, that's not to say that God is not able and God does not restore aspects, of, aspect of, aspects yeah. of our life this side of heaven. I can give plenty of testimonies of course, me in, too. in that regard. But what changed for me, and I'm sure what changed for you as you mature in, in, the, in the faith, in your walk with God, is that you no longer idolize those things. The ultimate pursuit becomes Christ in relationship with him. Everything else is secondary. Everything is secondary. Because, like for example, if we take homelessness, like the reason why a person may be homeless is probably because they're, they're addicted to drugs. Could be a case. Yeah. Right? It could be a case. And and maybe them coming to Christ fix their drug issues and they're no longer homeless. But another reason for homelessness, it could be you just can't find a job. Yeah. So imagine you preaching a gospel that says for somebody who just can't find a job because of whatever, the background or what, whatever reason. Imagine you preaching to them oh come to christianity and god will provide you with a job and god will provide no, yeah, that's, you that's dangerous man. like like just imagine that and, and then it, and then a year go by of you being faithful right yeah to jesus faithful. and and that doesn't happen yeah yeah just, just imagine what that does um to a to to a believer i mean it's it sets the standard for the wrong re type of relationship. Which is, so yeah. so even, even when you say, right, like imagine that person is being faithful, right? The reality is they don't even know what it looks like to be faithful because to them, they're earning their relationship with God. Yeah. So it's legalistic. Yeah. So It's, I have, it's I have, not even an authentically faithful, on their end, it's not even an authentically faithful relationship towards God because the whole way, the, the, the relationship that was painted to them by whoever brought them into the faith was one where if you do for God, he does for you. He does for you. Yeah. So I think for us, man, as 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 two guys with a platform, I think it's is for is it's only right for us to kind of use our platform to kind of let people know there is a reward for being a believer. But then that's not the only part of it. There's also a cost that we have to account. For following Jesus. Like, and 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 most people don't hear about this other side of it until they're probably two, three years in, or until somebody sits them down and actually disciples them. Yeah, depending on who your leadership depends is. Depends on who your leadership yeah. is, right? So, and I think um Luke 14 paint a beautiful picture of what it looks like to be a disciple of Jesus. Right? Because in Luke 14, so 
the the scene in Luke 14 is that there's a crowd of people. Some are there because, you know, they want a relationship. Some are there just because they, and some are just spectators. Just like you said, like, oh man, this is the man I heard about. Let me go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the motive doesn't change. Like it's from back then to now. Like if, it, if there's a crowd of people, you usually found those three yeah. of people in the crowd. Um, but then Jesus turns around and see everybody following him. So he decides to say, okay, this is what it costs to be my disciple, right? So we in Luke 14, 26, 26, 27, right? All right. So while he's walking with the crowd, he turns around and he says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father, father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And then he said, Who, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Like that's very extreme. It's heavy. And aggressive language. Like, come on, Jesus. Like you ain't had to go there. Like that's very extreme. And it's just the same type of language. It's the same type of language that he uses when he talks about if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, Cut it off, yeah. Chop it off. Like, it's very direct. It's very in your face. It's very aggressive and it's very extreme, right? There's two extremes there, matter of fact. The one extreme is you get the sense of one of the costs is pursuing something that looks like hatred to, to, to your, your, your wife, your brother, your father. And the other extreme is bearing your cross, right? Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So the other extreme is, I see that second extreme as more than just a parable or more than metaphor. Like you may have to die for Jesus right. and the, hand, the apostles, right? right? So that, but I think the reason why it's so extreme I think Jesus is trying to paint this picture that in order for you to be my disciple, you're going to have to commit to the highest cost possible, both relationally, right? You must hate your own father, mother, sister, husband, wife. Both relationally and physically, you must bear your cross for me. And we see that when Jesus first called the disciple of John. Remember, John was in the boat with his father. And Jesus said, come and follow me. And what did he do? He got up, he left his dad, and he followed Jesus. So I think the reason why Jesus was so extreme in his language is because it's, when you think about the cost of being a disciple of Jesus, you have to think of the highest possible price that you could pay. Because you know why? Then the specifics don't matter. Yeah. The specific of what that cost is and the prices don't matter because you've already made that commitment. All right? Yeah, no. I. It doesn't matter. I agree. I agree. And I think, I think your willingness, our willingness to see Jesus Christ as ultimate and everything else, including ourselves as secondary is, is proof that we've understood the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And it's proof that we've understood that eternal life is truly found in him. What other reason would I be willing to lay my life down? What other reason would I be willing yeah, to good. abandon my birth father and my birth mother if they came in between me and my relationship with God? What other reason but the fact that Jesus Christ holds my life in his hands and Jesus Christ is the one that rose me from the dead? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that, if we're not willing to 
follow it to that degree, then do we really do we really believe that Christ is our Savior? Yeah, and and that's why, you know, like preaching the power of the gospel is right. so important. Right. right. Because it's only the power of the gospel that could even make us consider or commit to something like that. Like if the if the gospel is not preached that way, there's no way that somebody would be willing to commit to that. I agree. I agree. Man, and it just it makes me go back on on my own, you know, on my own walk, man, because one scripture that day, um, I had a conversation with one of my coworkers, which is how this topic came about, one of my coworkers. And then um, he was just talking about his um, history with Christianity and is based on the same thing I was talking about. He was like, man, like, like I felt betrayed. I felt this, I felt this, I felt this because I would sold I would sold something that wasn't delivered. All right? And I and and I found myself kind of had to like reteach him what the true gospel is. And then we got on the topic of like this is what Jesus requires for those who follow him. And you know what he said? He said, man, if I knew that, I would have never signed up for Christianity. That's that's real right there. <laughs> he said, if, but it goes back to, you know, it's because the power of the gospel was not preached to him. So it's, it's very superficial. It's very super. It's like what you talked about earlier. Like, it's like, what can you do for me if you can't do that for me then it ain't worth it yeah i mean that 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 was my that was my experience that was my experience like it, it it was it became real easy to walk away from my faith to walk away from the relationship that i had with god when the god that i served wasn't meeting his side of the deal and that's what happens we serve a God with strings attached. Yeah. And when he doesn't meet his side of the deal, i.e. bless me with the things that I want or i.e. keep keep my finances, keep me from going under, keep me from struggling in this way or struggling in that way, you know, um, allow me to live the American dream, you know, if you can't do that for me, then why am I going to be faithful? Why am I going to, why am I going to, you know what I'm saying? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, like, I mean, it, even for me, like after my my um separation from my from my ex-wife and my divorce, like part a part of me walking away from Christianity, it, it wasn't the whole reason, but part of it was because I'm like, and I've mentioned this before, like, God, I've been faithful at that time for you 10 plus years. Right, I've traveled and preached the gospel in eight different states. Um, I was an elder, right? Um, I sacrificed what I thought, everything, to you, <laughs> and that's important because not, but 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 it's real because that's important because if you look back and like I did. There's a scripture that talks about the wind does not know where it's going, where it's coming from, where it's going. And then he compares that to it the is the same yeah. with those who are filled with the spirit. Yeah. Right. Like at at that time, if Jesus was to call me to Cuba to be a missionary, right? Didn't now this is me looking back. I, I would have been like, hell no. Nah. Yeah. So when I said I thought sacrifice, that's what I meant. Because now I'm looking back. I said, man, my life, like I, like my life was not how I thought it was. Hey, you were still on your terms. My dedication was to Jesus was not how I thought it was. The cost 
of being a disciple that we talking about, like I wasn't living that. But it's because I still had the idea like, God, I've done all of this in your name. But yet, like I'm losing my family. Like you said, I'm losing 50 percent custody of, of my daughter. I have to start my whole life over. And that led me. And you were witness of it. That led me to walk away from Jesus. That led me to walk away from the church. That led me to walk away from community. Right? Because I had this expectation that the cause was going to church. The cause was, you know, preach a little here and there. The cause was, you know, worship. The cause was serving. Like, like we have to understand the true cause of Christianity. It's way more than those things. But that's what I thought it was. The thought was, you know, going to the mall, preach a little gospel, preach the gospel on Sundays, going to church, going to Bible study. I oh, mean, this, this is what the Christian love: read my Bible, stay, stay away, try, try to stay away from sin. That's what that's ten plus years. That was my Christianity, and then when things hit the fan, I'm like, man, like it's not worth it because. The, the sacrifice that I thought that I made not, was not being rewarded. So that caused me to, but what's, bro, to what, walk away. What, what's so, like, Satan is so deceptive. He's so deceptive because in those moments of anger and frustration and, 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 and feeling enticed to walk away from the Christian faith. He paints this picture that clearly it wasn't worth it on this side, right? But if you come to this side, you're going to be able to do what you want, have this freedom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not going to have to make all these sacrifices, you know? Um, and then he, he interjects all these different lies. Like, and is there even a God anyway? Yeah. Like, you know what I what I hear so often, like, man, because here's the thing. When it's inconvenient for you to serve God, you will conjure up all of the different reasons why. The problem from the from Jump Street was the your foundation wasn't good anyway. Yeah. It wasn't right, which is why we're having this conversation. Yeah. Because your idea of, of God was a God that I do for him, he does for me. When that fails, we have this temptation to abandon that so now we can really have what it is that we want. We're just going to do it on our own. The lie is that what you don't realize is that you're going to suffer either way. With God, we experience suffering. There's a difference though. Without God, we experience suffering, but there's a stark difference. And, if, and what I begin to realize, and I'm sure you experience the same thing, is that when you did start to make decisions without God, initially it felt like, oh, this feels good. Conviction starts to drop. So you don't have this like heavy burden when you're making decisions that you know you probably shouldn't be doing, doing things you shouldn't be doing. And it feels fun at first. But eventually, you also realize there's a price that comes with living my own life and doing my own thing and making decisions apart from okay. God. And you realize over time that you can't fill those voids. You can't provide yourself with that life that only God gives you. So it's like, man, it's super. We, we, when, when we don't instill the right, true foundation of the gospel from a Christian from the beginning it's almost as if apart from grace we set them up for failure oh definitely definitely and and as you were talking man I'm, I'm thinking yeah we're gonna suffer either with Christ or apart from, apart from Jesus but then I started thinking about, man, like all those, like the very things that I was seeking Jesus for, when I left it, I started seeking it. Like, it's, it's, it's not that I stopped seeking pleasure. Yeah, right. It's not that I stopped seeking peace. Right? See, what people don't understand is 
is Christian or not, we are all looking for the same things. And then that comes in with the reward piece later. Yeah, yeah. But is either is either going to be with Jesus or without Jesus. So even when I walked away um, from Christianity briefly, like I was still seeking the same things, like still seeking pleasure. I was still seeking peace. I was still seeking happiness. I was still seeking joy. Well, right. What do you mean when you, because my, the pleasure I was seeking looked very different than the pleasure I was seeking with, when I was with God. Yes, of course. But I'm saying you, it, it, it looked different, but you were still seeking pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I get what that's, that's my point okay. is that like, just, just because I, I walked away from Christianity. That does not mean that I still did not want peace. It's just where I was getting it from the source, or attempting to get, or attempting yeah. to to get it from, was yeah. just different. Yeah, for sure, and I think it, sure. it, it 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 goes back to to just the gospel, bro. Understanding the gospel, and it's sad. Like I said, there's a profound sadness, like really for me, and in, in frustration because I used to be a pastor. You know what I'm saying? So. Like I cringe when I when I hear a counterfeit gospel that brings people into an expectation that if you just live this certain way, like you're gonna be rewarded with possessions, with money, with jobs, with with all of that, and that that just frustrates me because, and matter of fact, Jesus up the ante in Luke fourteen, right? We just read 26 and 27. Let's go down to verse 33. It says, So therefore, any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. See, now this is the this is a tough one because not we're talking to absolutes, right? There's two absolutes here. Any one of you is one absolute. That means this is for every single disciple. Like there's no exceptions. And then renounce all that he has, all of your possessions. Now, I know people are going to be out here. So does that mean that we can have like, like, like you said earlier, like whatever God gives us is for us to steward, to manage. But what this is saying is that we have to be willing at a drop of a dime to give it up. Yeah, to give it over. Yeah. For him. Now, do you think that's an attractive gospel that without the power? No. That somebody would be, oh, sign me up. Without without the realization <laughs> that you've been you've been saved from death, that is not attractive at all. That's something I'm gonna run from. Like who would we see in scripture? That when Jesus talked about, oh, you want to be my disciple, like, yeah, go give your possessions to the people walked away. Because they didn't see themselves as depraved. They didn't see themselves as as lost. They didn't see themselves as dead men and women walking, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, something that's super helpful when I think about the cost of Christianity I really sit down and I ask myself, what am I really giving up? Like, what is it that I'm really giving up? And when you look at Romans, I think it's Romans 2, verse 3, it says that the, the, the wages of sin is death, right? The thing that I'm giving up, if I look at the difference between my life with God, walking with Jesus, and my life doing it on my own, here was the difference. I did what I wanted, when I wanted, and I just lived out the desires of my flesh. That's That was the difference. So when you think about the cost of Christianity, and we hear this, the, the, we hear the calling of dying to self, you're dying to your carnal ways. You're dying to the, to the, to the very things that opposes Jesus. That opposes Jesus and is not good for you anyway. Anyways. And that's the, that was the greatest realization, apart from the immense grace that God has for me, was that 
giving in to the desires of my flesh at the end of the day kills me faster. Yeah. I fell deeper into a depression. I fell deeper into anxiety. I was more unhappy. I was more empty. You know what I'm saying? Like there was no, it, it got to a point where living on my own terms was extremely unsatisfying. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, we lie to ourselves when we try to make it seem like, oh man, it's not worth serving this God and this Jesus, all this sacrifice that I have to do and blah, 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 and all this other stuff. Because it's like, yo, like, think about what it is that God caused you to give up. Yeah, yeah. And 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 that's so true. I think the 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 basis, the simple term of counting the cost of a discipleship, I think you could sum it up in one word, and that is surrender. Like you find your life when you surrender your life in Jesus to Jesus. Right. Right. So but what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean to surrender? What does it look like to surrender to Jesus? And I think Luke 14, what we just said, paints a p- perfect picture of what it is, is about this willingness to sacrifice and put everything on the table relationally, physically, your possessions, everything is on the table. Now, does God allow us to steward and manage relationships? Of course, but everything is on the table and we have to be willing to disperse of it or give it up at any moment. And it's not only that, it's that we come to terms of peace with it. But it's not our term of peace, it's it's his term of peace. But here's the thing, man. When you trust God and you trust that God is a good father and you trust that he is in control and owns a thousand cattle on a thousand hills. It's all his. Then it doesn't feel as extreme as it sounds because you are in tune, your spirit is in tune with the goodness of God. That's God. It, it, it's, it, it's, what, it's what is meant to shape our prayer life. That's why it's, Lord, your kingdom come, your will, will be, be done God. on earth as it is in heaven. And that's so, that's so free, man. Like, don't that leave you just free? Because you fully trust. You fully trust. You fully trust. And I think, I think it, it, I think we find so much grace in the turmoil that we experience because you realize God allowed you to go down that road so that you could see who he truly is. You could experience his true love and his his true grace. And that takes you into a space where when things happen, after you've come out of that struggle, you experience struggle differently. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, because of the the all the different things that I've been through and God has pulled me out of it. It's caused me to grow in my trust for him. It's caused me to better respond to difficulty and challenge right when it comes to my walk with him so it's like you realize that with jesus nothing is in vain you know what i'm saying not, like no, not, not, not even what you're losing not even exactly nothing is in vain whereas without jesus we see we see with solomon when solomon's heart wasn't fully for god as scripture says He couldn't even enjoy the wealth he had. Joy was stripped from him. And do we not see that today? Turn on the TV and look at all the celebrities with millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. They go where they want, when they want. They do what they want. There's nothing they can't buy, nothing that they can't do. Mm -hmm. They can walk down the street if it's a dude and pick any woman they want. But yet, you see 
this this commonality amongst a lot of people that live in this fame apart from God, and that is unhappiness. This constant chase for a new high because their life, even with all the possessions that they have, is not is 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 not sustaining. They're not satisfied. Yeah, that is true. And and the thing is that, I, and I want us to, so for people that that are listening, and that's going to be watching, like we have to get perspective, right? So, yes, is there a cause? To being a disciple of Jesus. Yes. But man, there's so much more to gain. Oh yeah, the reward out- com- greatly outweighs there's the so, cost. There's so much more. And, 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 and that's the encouraging part of it. Right? That's what like, like keeps you like, ah, yes. You know, Paul, Paul talks about like I count everything as rubbish, as loss, to the surpassing value of knowing Jesus. Like there's, there's so much more to gain. Christianity is not a religion where you suffer all the time, or suffer in vain. Suffer in vain all the time. Like that. Like if like. That's not what Christianity is. And sometimes, you know, p- people could make it seem like that. But that's like the re- the the reward is so powerful. The reward is so amazing. So yes, there is a cause. But then there is a reward that comes with it. even in, in Luke 14, um, verse 14, it talks about like all of this, all of this will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Like there is no sacrifice or there is no price or there is no cost that you could pay here on earth that won't be repaid back a thousandfold. Right, right. And what's, be- what's be- at the resurrection. What's, what's, man, what's, what's beautiful as I'm just contemplating on is that we don't serve a God that approached us and said, hey, I'm God. Leave everything and follow me. Bro, we serve a God that stripped himself of some of his divinity, walked this earth, walked the same ground, ate the same food, slept on the floor, washed disciples' feet, was spit on, was beaten, was ridiculed, slept in a manger, modeled what it looks like to live a life obedient to God, then willingly hung on the cross, then said, come follow me. Bro, like that's, we are, we are, we are being called by someone that served us, loved us first, led by example. And man, we're so, we're so adverse to leadership nowadays because there's so many leaders that don't exemplify the leadership of Christ because they don't lead by example. You know what I'm saying? They just speak with this false sense of authority, tell people what to do, but yet, man, you ain't, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not serving the way Christ served. So of course, of course, like, Something's gonna be the dope. cost. The cost doesn't seem worth it. Yeah. But when you see Jesus rightly, you realize, man. Not only is the cost worth it, but it's something that I run after. It's something that I long for. 
is something that I thirst for. We see this in Paul. Paul says, I consider all things that I may run the race to win it. I consider all things, which means I change, I change every aspect of my life. I look at every single little aspect of my life just so I can run this race well and I can run this race to win because the reward is more than just a reef that I get to put on my head like some athletes get or a medal that oh, I hang man. around my chest, you know, that one day is just dust, you know, rusting on some shelf. The reward that we gain with Christ is eternal. So I run all the more. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I get Jesus. And, and getting Jesus does not mean solely you get things that he can provide. Right, of course. Because some people, some people can hear yeah, yeah, this. Right. They see the they see the they see the gift the the gift the gift over the gifter. The gift over the gifter. So yeah. we have to make sure we like like Jesus is enough for us. So so yeah, man. So so this is just an encouragement, um, not only to, to 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 people who have been presented with that type of gospel, but even to the leaders and the people who has a platform that is preaching that type of gospel like christianity like like we said is not about jesus being a gene and whatever your wish is he right. you go or you get a car you get a house like like that is not christianity it's way deeper than that <laughs> it's way deeper than that that, that is not christianity there is something that there is a price tag that we have to pay. And the reason why is because everything that Jesus requires from us, the commitment that we have to give to Jesus is countercultural. It's counterintuitive to our nature. So this is not Jesus saying, oh, this is my requirement. You have to do it because I know like it's, it's because because of our sinful nature. Everything that we want, everything that we desire, everything that we think about in our in our sinful nature, goes against w what Jesus wants from us. And because of that, if we want if we want to become disciples of Jesus, that's why we have to be willing to pick up our cross. Right. And what's 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 even more fascinating? Speaking of counterintuitive, the reward that we receive through Christ from Christ is counterintuitive to the to the to the our nature our nature we don't deserve it we don't we don't even deserve it the reward that we receive eternally we don't even deserve it but yet when we make the decision to follow Christ and see him as ultimate because of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made for us we are able to step into that blessing we are able to sit at the right hand of the Father because of who Christ is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and when 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 we talked about the goodness of God, where when you talked about it earlier, I man, the one thing is is like you said, man, God is so good as a father, as a everything that He says that okay, like there is a cost that needs to be paid, but you know what? I'm going to help you. I'm not even going to let you do it by yourself. Right? So it's not like we're going into this because then what happens is that we could become legalistic. Right? It's not that we go into this bit like, man, I got a... Like, like we have a helper right. that's going to remind us, that's going to help us push, that's going to help us fight, that's going to remind us, that's going to put people in our life, that's going to put um, certain... Uh, things in our life, churches in our life, like that for us to run this race. Like God doesn't just leave us like, oh, well, this is the standard. This is the cause. I, no, he, he provide resources for us to be able to attain. Yeah, he meets us where we are. He meets us where we are, you know? So, so this is just an encouragement, man, for if, if, if you are a believer that, is disgruntled because of how the gospel was presented or how Christianity was presented to you. Um, hopefully you hear this, hopefully you watch this and hopefully you start reading scripture and get under the right leadership so you can see how this Christian thing is lived out. Um, and leave us a comment. 
you know? Yeah, man. We respond. Um, but the important thing is for me, and not for, for Gio too, is that we are passionate about people knowing the power that comes with the gospel by itself. Like, you don't, you don't need nothing else. <laughs> you don't need nothing else. You know what I'm saying? So, anything to say? See you guys next time. Yeah, no, we'll catch y'all on the next one. Hope that you guys received it. And uh, grace and peace.